branding is really important for yourself and your resume as well. So why is branding important, right? It sells you into the process. Again, sources are going to be looking for you. So you want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date and it really matches up with roles that you're interested in. It can influence behavioral questions throughout the interview process. Uh, maybe a hiring manager will read into something on your LinkedIn or your resume and uh, it may influence some of the behavioral questions that they ask. And then it really is able to sell you through the process, right? This includes interviewers, um, hiring managers, the team matching process, you know, building and curating your resume and LinkedIn will really help those teams narrow down, you know, why you're a good match for the role why you fit well with the team, why does your skill set match up? These kind of questions can all be answered with a very detailed um, resume uh, and LinkedIn. Really quickly here, uh, let's see. Couple of questions here. Uh, Shravan asks, is it necessary to show your career progression as part of your LinkedIn or resume? For example, SWE1 to SWE2, et cetera. Yes, I, I'd say it's very important to show that career progression. And the best way to do this is, you know, let's say, you're at the same company for 10 years, right? You can put the most in your job description, you can put what you're most recently working on, but within each, you know, let's say you're, you have a title and then you have years worked, you want to still include when you were a SWE one, when you were a SWE two, to showcase to the readers how your career velocity looks and how your career progression looks. So any promotions, anything like that, you always want to include in both your LinkedIn and your resume to showcase that you are moving up uh, in terms of your career. Travis asks, how similar should LinkedIn and resumes be? Great question. Um, for me, I think that LinkedIn and resume should be pretty similar. The, uh, the only caveat I have is on LinkedIn, you can be a little bit more descriptive in your job descriptions. Now, the reasoning is because it is a web page, so it is built to showcase large formats of text without being hard to read. On a resume, on a PDF, or a Word document, the more text that you have, the harder it is for a reader to be able to identify your strong points and kind of what you've been working on. Recruiters most times only spend about six to 10 seconds per resume, as hard as that uh, is to believe. And so you want to make sure that the most key elements of your resume are highlighted throughout. So whether that be, again, your career progression, um, you know, maybe if uh, education in terms of, you know, where you went to school is important to you, uh, make sure those are highlighted and your projects, right? What you worked on. You want to be able to describe these in a concise way. Um, so definitely resume should be shorter than LinkedIn, but I think they should be relatively um, very similar. So we're, let's talk about how to curate. When you, when you think of a resume to understand how to curate, you really want to think of music. Musician number two is Metallica. But as you can see, both of their Facebook pages have a pretty similar amount of likes. I, I know JT here has oh, 1 million more, um, but when it comes to 30 plus million, not that big of a difference. Right. And the reason why we kind of showcase this is that, you know, both brands attract a lot of people. Right. And it was very evident in this session, you know, it was about a 50 50 split. And so, you know, same with yourself, right? Your, your brand will attract a lot of people, but at the same time, you know, it should not attract everyone and it's not going to, there are going to be people who appreciate your brand. Right. And so really think about when you're curating your resume and your LinkedIn, think about your brand and who you're trying to attract right? What type of company are you trying to attract and really curate that brand to your brand to fit that target, you know? And then when it comes to going back, circling back to your target companies, your tier one companies and your tier two companies, you want to see like, what do your target companies have in common and is relatable and how can you convey that in your resume and your LinkedIn? It's, it's okay not to check every single box. Um, but again, it's really important to present your impact, especially on your resume. You want to include in your job descriptions, what you did, how you did it and the impact this really lets people know that you're really good at your job right that those kind of statements what you did how you did and what impact that your project had uh, is a lot more impactful than just writing what your day-to-day -day was in the particular company i think that's a one kind of pretty common mistake that i do see when people writing writing their resumes is that they tend to write kind of each kind of minor thing that they did or what, what their day-to-day -day kind of looked like and kind of what sounded like routine. Instead, what you should focus on is, you know, maybe three or four impactful projects that you had at your time at, at whatever company that you worked at. Um, and again, showcase what you did, how you did it, and what impact it had on the company, right? To showcase that, you know, hey, these projects I worked on, they're really important uh, and an integral part to our company. And you want to showcase um, that as well. So Really, again, front load those summary and bullets and impact, impact, discuss your impact, 
what you did with the company and things like that. And that'll help your resume and your LinkedIn stand out a lot more than all the other thousands of resumes and LinkedIn's that are out there.